Hey, I get it. They only have four picks, but we still got to go over it, man. I'm excited for it. We got the Miami Dolphins today. This is a team that is going for it, man. They're saying we are all in on the Twitch train. So we're going to talk about what they need to do still remaining on this roster. And we'll get into a seven-round mock draft. Let's dive into it here for this offense and see what they still need to improve. It's the offensive line. They've got some question marks. And it's mainly on the right side of the offensive line. You have three positions. I feel good about, right? Between Robert Hunt, Connor Williams, and Teron Armstead. What a steal of a deal. I mean, I get it. He's injured, but to be able to get a guy that is a top five, top three left tackle in the NFL, that's a, you know, plus the contract, I felt like was pretty dang solid for them, right? A good, solid deal. Better than some of these other contracts I've seen. So those are your three starters. And then now you get a question mark between Michael Dieter and then you have a competition, right, between League and Eichenberg and then also Austin Jackson. Who's going to win that job? If I had to guess right now, probably going to be Austin Jackson as that starting right tackle, mainly because I think he's scheme fit. If there's any place that's going to work for him, it's going to be with this new regime, putting him at that right tackle position in this wide zone system. That's the, what I'm seeing with Mike McDaniel. So we'll see how that all works out. But between Eichenberg and Jackson, you got to get one of those guys to work out. And that why that's, to me, why it's not a draft need. To me, they need to add some more center competition, whether that's through free agency or the draft. And at this point, you're looking at the draft. So one more piece there. And the offensive line can at least get back to average, if not better than that, with Taron Armstead, fully healthy, Connor Williams. You know, that could be a really good solid group over there, making sure to protect, even though it's not Tua's blind side, but making sure you keep Tua upright. And he won't need to, he won't need to stay that long because you got weapons galore. I mean, he probably is getting the ball out of his hands in two seconds. You got Tyree Kill, you got Jalen Waddle and Cedric. Wilson. I mean, come on, man. This is crazy. I mean, all these guys, you they all played actually in the slot primarily. I mean, between Waddle Hill, the, you know, they moved around. Cedric Wilson may play mainly in the slot. You know, there were injuries, things like that. But uh, yeah, you got a lot of dudes that are going to be able to move across the football field. And uh, did I mention they got lots and lots of speed? So yeah, you got Preston Williams back there, Trent Sheriff, and you know, River Craycroft, and some more depth, you know, Lynn Bowden and whatnot. I mean, that's that's their main receiving core, though, between Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Cedric Wilson. They don't need it. They don't need any more help there. Um, other areas other than the center position that you could look at in the draft, maybe another running back, but I think it's okay between Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, and then Miles Gaskin, uh, you know, Solomon Ahmed, and even uh, Garrett Dokes, who they, what they got last year. Was he UDFA? I think he might have been UDFA, but you got two fullbacks too, so don't forget about that. I think Alex Engel will end up winning that job, but they're going to have a competition there. And then a tight end, you're in a good position too, between Mike Gusecki, Durham Smythe, Hunter Long, and Adam Shaheen, all, you know, Stetham Carter. That's their tight end position. Offensive line center is really my number one priority with these picks. And then defensively, I would say the biggest need is probably just adding another other linebacker. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do there because first off, they're a little thin. I mean, you got Calvin Munson, Sam McGuavin and some depth. Elton Roberts can come in and be a day one starter. That's what I would imagine at this point, but you need to find that long-term replace or you know, that long-term starter next to Jerome Baker, maybe a big, tough, physical guy. That's something we can look at there. And then defensive line, some more interior help could be an option. Remember, they got free agents coming up with Christian Wilkins, who is that free agent next year. Roquan Davis, as your nose tackle, I'm fine with that. Jordan Jenkins, some backup. You know, Adam Butler can also play in a little bit of a variety of a role there. But um, And then Zach Seiler, who's a good player, man. You have him. He's under contract, I believe, for two more seasons. But wouldn't hurt to add a little bit more of a rotation in there for injuries and stuff like that. Uh, edge position... I mean, ideally, yes, you would add in one more piece here, but Jalen Phillips, Emmanuel Agba, who they retain, and then also Andrew Van Grinkle and Brennan Scarlett. I feel pretty good. Vince Beagle, you got some help there, but uh, for the most part, not too worried about it. I think they're they're overall pretty solid there. Could be an area they look at just depending on who is available, you know what I mean? And then finally, I'm going to say safety is an interesting one. I don't think it's going to be something they go after. I think they're okay, but you do have you know Eric Rowe, Brandon Jones, you know, Clay Clayton Fendulum, you know, Shedrick Redwine's also a good develop, you know, a, a good uh, backup safety veteran presence for you. But Javon Holland, obviously your number one, your safety there, your free safety. Overall, I would say they're in a pretty good spot there. Not really that big of a concern for me, but maybe you look at it. But uh, with four picks, probably not something we're going to be prioritizing. Maybe the linebacker position and then uh, also interior defense line. Those I think are the, the two priorities maybe if anything, or even edge or something like that. But they could add another corner, especially with the secondary. 
and, and you know how they value it. Uh, Nick Niederum, though, and Keon Cross, and who they bring in as some more depth there in the slot. Feel good about that. We still need to see more out of Noah Igbogamy. We need to, hopefully, he gets some more development this year, man. I know he was a young player coming out, but he, you know, you want to see something there. But moving on here to the draft, and we're going to take the whiz kid and Zach Tom out of Wake Forest, and this dude is super smart, man. He graduated, what, cum laude or whatever they call it. I wouldn't know anything about that. But anyway, he's also entered into the uh, NBA program there at Wake Forest. So the dude knows what he's going to do. He ain't going broke. I'll tell you that right now. He's going to he's gonna figure out all the numbers and, you know, investing and all that stuff. But Zach Tom going to with the football, right? And that's what we're projecting him to be a center at the next level. Played left tackle there for the Demon Deacons. And he was super, man. He really was. And he went up against Jermaine Johnson and really just shut him down, man. He didn't take Jermaine Johnson really struggled against Zach Tom. Zach Tom thrives in an environment where he's got great balance, right? Great, great balance. And he's really smart. And I think that's why people are, are projecting him to go into center because he has that anticipation, that understanding and whatnot. Just the, you know, the coolness, understanding play, blitz recognitions, things like that. You never really see him get out of phase. The problem with Zach Tom is kind of the lower half. I don't know if he has that lower half strength, right? Um, you know, and he finds ways not to lose. But yeah, it's the lower half strength. When you get into the NFL versus some of these bull rushers and a lot more strength, that could be a problem. And then obviously edge rushers who know how to use that strength. This is one of the reasons too why I was a little bit lower on Jermaine Johnson. I just didn't see the power, but that's Jermaine Johnson talk. Zach Tom though, I think he's a really good player. Put him in there, center, got great movement skills too. He can be that developmental dude. And if nothing else, adding in more competition there with Michael Dieter. Now we get into our fourth round selection. And this one I'm copying a little bit from Dane Brugler. Darian Beavers. Yes, Darian Beavers. Man, he's that big physical dude. And one of the things I will say, because I had to go back and watch, you know, see what I was missing, because I, I watched him in his combat. Like, this dude's pretty smooth for his size. And he is a smooth athlete at his size. And I think what the thing is when I go back on his tape is it's more of the processing. Because to me, he was a little bit like stiff, or there was just something not there when I watched him. And I think it's more of just like maybe play recognition and stuff like that rather than all the athlete stuff. I don't think he's the greatest athlete or nothing, but I think he is a little bit, you know, not quite there in his play recognition just yet, but that can be developed. Give him some time there, but he's going to add a nice piece of element there to your defense with, um, you know, Jerome Baker. I think it'd be a good one-two punch. And Again, I feel like it'd be a good fit there in that 3-4, which they're keeping into that defense. Then we get into our seventh round selections. It's Chris Hinton out of Michigan, the Wolverine. He is a dude that's super stout, going to add a nice run defense game to you in a rotation, keeping your guys fresh, early down player. And I mean, he can do it here and there, but he's not really, you know, Mr. Explosive Guy or anything, and that's all fine. But adding some more depth on that interior defense. And then finally, we finish off the draft with Mika Tafua, the defense alignment out of Utah, the Hawaiian. And this dude is relentless. His motor never runs cold. He's always running hot and he's out on the edge flying with his pass rush moves. Now, the thing about him and the reason why he ends up falling is because first off, he doesn't really have the length you look for. He doesn't really have the explosiveness, right? He's not Mr. Athlete guy. I think he even ran forward nine. And it shows, he, again, he's not that dude, but he just finds ways to win, man. He's a relentless pass rusher. He's going to clean up sacks, do a lot of that sort of stuff. And he can be a great situational player for you and just take a little bit of pressure off of Jalen Phillips or Emmanuel Ogba or whatevs, right? And that's really what he is. He's going to be a nice, solid depth piece for you. And you got your a decent rotational player but I love the effort I love the motor with him and you get yourself some more help and then we take a look after we've done oh we're already done with the draft but they only have four picks we add in a developmental center and Zach Tom could come in early on just depending you never do know but he has some versatility on that offensive line either way but hopefully you can find a good starting center between Michael Dieter and Zach Tom and then defensively adding in Darian Beavers you know he can be that long-term heir apparent uh, Eldon Roberts probably your day one starter but uh, you have him him and Jerome Baker now as a nice rotation. Mika Tafua as some more help on the defensive line and Chris Henton to round it all out. Again, not the most exciting draft, but man, when you got someone like, you know, Tyreek Hill and you got some help on this defense, you know, get some young studs. This is a team that is going to be very, very close. Can they get the job done? Tua, there's a lot of pressure, but I'm really rooting for him. I love Tua. He's a really fun player. It's just going to be the matter of can they get it done?
done now with Mike McDaniels coming over in this new system for the Miami Dolphins. But it's going to be a fun one, man. The AFC East is going to be a fun division this year. Going to be some explosive ones. Come on, Jets. You better get some defensive firepower in the draft. We're going to need it. But that's going to do it here for the Miami Dolphins. Let me know what you think. Are you super excited? I'm super excited for this one. And I hope everyone has a good day.